Hey guys, what's going on? Today we are talking about a new foundation that has gotten me pretty excited. So we're gonna do a first impressions and then a full wear test for probably about nine hours. If you're wondering, if you couldn't tell from the title of the video, we are going to talk about the CoverGirl True Blend Matte Made Foundation. I talk about this as I apply it, but what really caught my attention for this in particular was that it's transfer resistant, well it claims to be transfer resistant, and I have a huge problem when I talk on my phone getting foundation all over my phone and I am on my phone all day long and also I am super allergic to like everything so going outside I'm constantly dabbing my nose with tissue so I'm always like kind of pulling the foundation off of my nose. I can definitely see it when I put the tissue down. So if you have those kind of struggles and wanna see how this wears throughout the day, this is gonna be a good one for you. I also thought this would be super helpful because I have a video on the CoverGirl Vitalist Healthy Elixir. So to me, this is kind of like, the like matte sister to that foundation, even though the CoverGirl Vitalist doesn't claim to be transfer resistant, and that definitely transfers like all over, at least on me. I think this is like a good uh, alternative for those of you who struggle with that one because it's too dewy. So yeah, if you guys are interested in seeing my thoughts and how this wears throughout the day, go ahead and keep watching. We are zoomed in as close as possible so you could see all of my imperfections, but that's okay, I'm a human. And sometimes I feel like when I put my hair in braids like this, I kind of look like a snake. So I might look like a snake, but my hair's wet and I don't feel like drying it. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get started. I picked up the shade M10 in the CoverGirl True Blend Matte Made Foundation. This is what it looks like. Love the packaging, nice and sleek, simple, love that. And the reason I was attracted to this is because I heard Stephanie Letta, SMLXO, here on YouTube talk about how it was transfer proof. And I always have an issue with transfer. I blow my nose a lot. I have a lot of allergies. So if you have allergies and like every orifice of your face kind of leaks, that's what happens to me. This is going to be a good one for you to see how it wears and how it like holds up through that through the day. So I just wanted to briefly talk about the like you know, online claims of this and stuff. So it has 40 shades, which is really good. Good for CoverGirl for doing that and like listening to people and catering to every skin tone. That's obviously something that's really necessary. So the back says comfort matte finish, oil-free formula, pump applicator included. And it looks like it has a matte finish. And then online it says, from your favorite CoverGirl foundation line comes a matte formula that isn't drying or cakey. True Blend Matte Maids formula is developed with flexi hold technology that creates a strong yet flexible film on skin for durability and comfort, while the mattifying powders absorb oil and minimize pores for a soft matte flawless finish up to 12 hours of wear. Pore minimizing oil control transfer resistant, available in 40 shades. So that's what she claims. So let's go ahead and get Get started I'll do the typical like sponge on one side I picked up a new sponge I picked up the morphe sponge I've only tried it once I didn't wear any makeup for the past week um, I I realized I could like post on YouTube now post updates and I've been struggling with one of my cats he's been peeing outside the pan a lot and like scratching a lot so I had a rough week, I was scared for him, but he's all healthy, took him to the vet, did a full workup, he's healthy, so things are looking up now, but sorry I haven't posted in a week. It's weird not filming for a week. I think I'm gonna start with the sponge side on this side and then do the brush side on the other side. But yeah, it is weird not, oh, it's nice that it has a little lock too, that's nice when traveling. And of course this is one fluid ounce, which is very standard for foundation. I'm hoping this color is going to match me. I should grab a mirror here. Um, I bought this when I was a little more self tan. I think I bought it, I bought it like five days ago. Might be a little orangey, but that's okay. We'll make it work. I can always put on like a self tan something or the other. I'm just gonna bring my mirror a little closer. No idea how much I need. I don't think it said what coverage it was, at least in the description. We'll see. So, sponge side first. So, first thoughts, it's blending out really easy. It's not looking very patchy anywhere. And, I mean, I, that, 
I always think it's like partially in due to like the tool and this Morphe sponge I actually like a lot. But yeah, so far, blending nicely. I'd say this is definitely, let me just sit a little bit closer for you guys. See, this is more of like medium coverage right now. You can see some of my redness. You might not be able to see it on camera, but I can see like a slight bit of redness right there. Actually, the match isn't bad, which is kind of weird because I thought that was going to be a little too orangey, but uh, still tacky. So I'm going to, before I go in on this side, just in case it dries down because it is a matte foundation, I'm just going to build up a little bit where I need extra coverage, like my cheeks there, my chin, a little on the forehead. See how it builds as well, even if I didn't need an extra layer. I mean, I don't need it. I like kind of going a little bit lighter in like the warmer months, although it's like 50 degrees I think today. I always like to test out to see how it builds for you guys who might want a little more coverage. So far building beautifully. All right, so here's what we're looking like with two layers on this side, and then this is obviously my normal skin, so you guys can kind of see the difference here. I definitely think after I put on that second layer it built it up a little bit to I don't know maybe almost full coverage or like a really high medium coverage I can see a little bit of redness there yeah I would say more like a higher medium coverage than full coverage you can see the different colors in my skin there I kind of brought it over a little much but it's not sitting too funny anywhere I always get like build up on my nose with foundation where it looks like it sits on top of it that's just something that happens with my nose. I don't know what's up with it. I get facials regularly. I exfoliate. I don't know. But yeah, overall it looks really good. Looks smooth. It doesn't look like super matte. Maybe it needs to dry down a little bit, but it almost looks like, yeah, I mean, I don't even know if I would call this matte at this point, but maybe it just needs to dry down. So let's go ahead and do the other side with the brush. Whenever I use a brush, I always like to just kind of spritz. Well, it would help if we opened it the tip of the brush so it's not just like a like and then I kind of like pat like that on the back of my hand just so it's it's not so like dry and it doesn't like pull at my skin if that makes sense so go ahead and go in with this side as well the smell kind of reminds me of the healthy violist which makes sense since it's from the same company Definitely faster with the brush side, but I definitely think I like how the sponge side is sitting a little bit more. I'm going to use the sponge to kind of touch over my nose because that's looking rough right now. Yeah, the nose, it's not sitting on super well on the tip of the nose. You can like see it's breaking apart already. Like I said, that's just kind of my nose. I'm going to just add a little touch more and blend it out with the sponge. Yeah, I just don't think it's gonna sit on there. I think that on the brush side, my pores are a little more prevalent than on the sponge side. I keep saying brush for sponge side. It's making my eyebrow itch. I don't know why or what that is. It's also itching right there. Hopefully I'm not allergic to this, but yeah, you can see this is the sponge side. This is the brush side. So yeah, like I said, I like the sponge side a little bit more. I should probably build up on the brush side a slight bit like I did on the sponge side just to see for some reason I didn't feel like I, I I don't feel like rather I need to as much on the brush side and it's definitely not doing anything for my pores yeah I'm, I'm not I'm not a super big fan of how it's going on on the brush side maybe like for the neck since it's easy but I'm just gonna take my sponge and kind of work over that overall it does look nice though it looks it looks nice on my skin but I'm not like I can take this off now I'm not like wowed by it like I was by the physician's formula right away uh, I like the physician's formula a little bit more I think it like plumps the skin a little bit that might be due well I 
should be due to the hyaluronic acid but yeah here's what we're looking at i still don't think this looks like super matte so if you like a matte foundation but like not to look like super super matte which probably plays into the like not cakey like they were saying look this might be a good one for you so what i'm gonna do now is put on the rest of my makeup and i'm actually gonna film a different video i picked up let me just show you guys some of the new wet and wild collection some of their i forgot what this is called but i picked up some goodies so i'm gonna test these out in another video and then i will check back here so that'll probably be like Oh, I'd say like an hour or so. Let's see. Right now it is 8.29 in the morning. So I'm going to start that video and then I'll come back and I would assume it'll be somewhere around like 9.30, 10 o'clock by the time I'm done with that. So we'll do a check in then. But obviously you see what it looks like now. I'm happy with it. Looks good. Um, and then I will do another check in later today. So once again... Looking pretty good. All right, guys, total change of plans. I decided I wasn't going to do that wet and wild video today because I truly just wanted to make it about the foundation. And if there was fallout and all that stuff, I thought it might kind of affect the foundation. So I decided I'll do that tomorrow and we'll just keep it about the foundation today. So it is now 10. Mm, nope, that's not going to help you. I'm so bad at this. It is 10.03, so the foundation's been on for what, like an hour and a half already? And this is what we're looking like. I've been outside, don't mind my lashes. I think this one's kind of coming off and they're cut differently, but I'm having a hard lash day. You guys have all been there. But anyway, I've gone outside, I've walked the dog, and like I said, my my nose just kind of runs when I go outside my eyes water my eyes aren't watering very much but my nose was definitely running and I was kind of just like patting it which is what I do with a tissue and it was definitely transferring onto the tissue but there's obviously like liquid involved so I can't really blame that on transfer but as far as like to touch there's no transfer that way I did um, take my Charlotte Tilbury powder and just lightly with a very very loosely packed brush just kind of go like this around so everything I put on top of it would blend everything I did put on top of it blended perfectly and I do like how it's looking a little bit more now than I did originally I liked it when I put it on but I wasn't like super wowed by it I'm still not like super wowed by it but it looks nice it definitely looks a lot more matte than I thought like originally I, I was kind of like is this matte but it's definitely matte and uh, it's a healthy matte though it doesn't look like cakey like they said it's not a cakey matte it's just kind of a healthy matte so yeah this is what everything is looking like like I said it's 10 o'clock now it's been on for an hour and a half so you guys can kind of see that I hope you can see it on camera it's definitely looking patchy which all foundations do on my nose right there there's nothing I can do about it like I said I get facials I get peels I exfoliate I mask I don't know what the deal is with my nose but I, I've gotten like these little blood vessels removed on my nose so that might have something to do with it I've gotten them like burnt off and cut off so I'm not sure but overall everything does look nice I'm happy with how it looks I'm more than happy to go outside but there's just nothing that I'm like oh wow this is amazing like I was with the physician's formula <laughs> physician's formula and that just might be because I typically like more of a dewy foundation so I will check in probably around like five or six o'clock that's my typical like wear time and I will let you know through the day if anything changes. But yeah, this is what we're looking like and I will see you guys in quite a few hours. <laughs> All right, guys, we are back for the final check-in. It is 3.59, it's basically four o'clock. So the foundation's been on for seven and a half hours at this point and I am very, very ready to take it off. I was ready to take it off probably around like one o'clock, two o'clock. I'm gonna scoot in a little bit so you guys can see. I'm really hoping my camera is gonna be able to show this, but the foundation, oh, by the way, my lashes are long gone. I ripped those off a long time ago. They were just too heavy for a day like today. So there's gonna be some like remnants on my eyes, but ignore that. But anyway, the foundation is now sitting on top of my skin rather than like meshing with the skin. And it's pretty much like everywhere. Definitely on the like tips of the cheeks here, on the nose, which was an issue in the first place, and I'm not gonna judge it on that because that's kind of an issue with every foundation I have, like I talked about. It's basically off on the chin, and it's really sitting on top of my forehead. So 
it's not something you would see if you were looking at me on the street but if you got close all up in my business or if you held like a mirror to your face like i'm looking at you could definitely see it so with that said it's not like the worst foundation i've ever tried but it's definitely not the best and i cannot see myself grabbing for this again so this one is definitely a pass for me i might try to mix it with a couple other things maybe mix it with like a more hydrating foundation or something like that something that like plays a little bit better with my skin but yeah i just don't think it's worth it at this point like i really hope you guys can see let me just like hope the camera focuses on all of this for a second it's just crumbling apart everywhere definitely off right here like i said i'm like allergic to everything outside so i wipe my nose i've just been dabbing it though with that said I always kind of try to dab it when I have foundation on, but it's definitely come off around there. The Let me grab a tissue and we can see if it's transfer resistant at this point. I should have did this at the beginning of the video after my foundation sat in as well, but I didn't. So I'm just gonna kind of like press it in. Yeah, nothing on the towel, which is awesome. And I've had my phone up to my face like all day and there's really, really minimal, I don't know if you guys are gonna, yeah, every time I lift it, it's gonna go on. It's, there's minimal foundation buildup on my phone. So I, it does hold up to that claim, but as far as like not cakey, this one looks like extra cakey right now. So like I said, I was ready to pretty much take this off around like one o'clock. That's when it kind of started to really like irritate me when I was looking in the mirror, but obviously I left it. I do think that my oils, and I am not oily at all, if I had to classify myself, I would put myself in the more dry category. I'm not dry, but I'm definitely more on the dry side than oily. And I feel like my oils have started to come out with this foundation. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera, but I can see it like obviously where my highlight is. It looks like there's a little more like, it's not just highlight, it's like natural oils coming through. See it a little bit on my chin, and then I could see it all over my forehead. So if you are a little more oily, this did claim to keep oils at bay, but I don't know, it, I don't know, I don't have oily skin, but it seems like my oils are coming through a little bit more. I did use the Makeup Forever Step 1 Hydrating Primer, so it might be that. Maybe that's not the right primer for this. I'm going to have to experiment with it a little bit with some other primers, some other products and see, but at this point, I do not think you guys need to run out and get this. I think it was like $11.99 at my Walgreens, not on sale, so it's not like a huge price point, but I don't think this is anything to write home about. So that is it for this one, you guys. Let me know your thoughts below. Were you excited to try this? Have you tried it? Give me some more of your like favorite drugstore foundations. I've been like kind of like excited about drugstore foundations again lately since that physician's formula really worked for me. So yeah, thanks so much for spending some time with me today, guys. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. It means the absolute world to me. And thank you so much for being patient for the last week since I haven't posted. I promise we'll get back to the normal schedule. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Bye.